as Jacqueline said, my name is Kalisa Kastning, and thanks for that introduction. Um, I wanted to start just with acknowledging both mm -hmm. Holly and my privilege. Um, we are both white, cisgender, heteronormative, thin, athletic, able-bodied, and, and middle class. And so we just wanted to acknowledge that today. And um, in, our, in our project title, Moms Matter Now, we use the term mom as an inclusive term. Um, it can be interchangeably used with birthing person as well. So we just wanted to acknowledge both of those here today. And this is yeah, a photo of us and, and our children and um, obviously who we are. So we can go to the next slide, please, Jacqueline. Is it, it's not advancing for some reason. Yeah, I think you have for a PDF, I think you have to go maybe in tools. And there we go. There we go. Okay. Great. Okay. So a little bit, um, or hey, Kalisa, were you going to do this one or was I? You were. I think so, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, so our story, yeah, where did where did Moms Matter begin? Moms Matter now begin. Um, so Holly and I have been friends for a really long time. And even as close friends, um, it took us a long time to actually share um, some real thoughts and feelings that we had um, during pregnancy and postpartum. And once we shared them, we're just kind of like, wait a second, like, um, if we had these feelings, others did, others do too. Um, and so that kind of got us starting to think about just, you know, what we could, what we could provide. Um, fast forward, March, 2020 hit, and we all know the world as we knew it shut down. And that just increased our, um, uncertainty, fear, things that we weren't sure that we could share with others and, um, a lot of isolation and, and loneliness and, what that came with, um, you know, our kids not being in, in school, childcare shutdowns, and both us and, you know, many of you, we still had to work. And so um, that just created even more conversation around, like, we need to do something about this to help um, ourselves and others. So even though we were totally depleted of energy from living through this pandemic, we just felt like this project was re-energizing in a way of how we could help others. So um, that's kind of the, the backstory of, of where this started. So next slide. Okay, just a minute. Oops. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the slow scroll, it's good, it's good. So, you know, Kalisa shared how, you know, we kind of joined um, together, but of course, um, we were not alone in these motherhood struggles. Um, you know, we've heard a lot about this by this point, but the COVID or COVID and the pandemic, like really kind of highlighted and, um, just really exposed, um, the economic, societal and community infrastructure or lack thereof, um, for women and birthing people and those trying to work outside the home. Um, you know, I feel like the feminist part of me just had this kind of crisis because so many um, women and birthing people were having to leave um, their work out, outside of the house to kind of be the one to stay home and um, help make the virtual schooling happen. So 5.4 um, million women in the U.S. left the workforce during the pandemic and, you know, some of those have yet to return and maybe some of those are by choice, um, but maybe some of some of them aren't. And Kalisa and I are both big proponents of, of people having um, that choice. So here, you know, mothers were three times more likely um, to have left their job during during the, during the pandemic and, you know, kind of the the mental load, the virtual school. Um, at one point, we even made a Instagram post about how like masks and um, things like that were part of the mental load, right? Um, and vaccinations and testing, like that, that was huge. Um, and then, you know, we, we know um, that PMADS, which stands for perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, affect uh, one in five to seven, depending on what study you're looking at, um, women and birthing people. And then it's believed during the pandemic that that number was actually closer to one in three. You know, people were becoming parents in isolation. People had no social support. People didn't have access to um, providers via physical health and mental health, et cetera. 
Um, and then on top of that, women with children under the age of three experience the biggest increase in substance use. So, you know, according to one study that we found, um, a 323 percent uh, increase during during lockdown. And so that really kind of highlights, um, you know, the the need um, for moms and birthing people to have support. And then on the left side of your screen, um, we actually hosted a scream, a primal scream. <laughs> um, someone did this, I don't know, somewhere else in the country. And we were like, we're going to do our own. And so we put it out on social media and people showed up in the service high parking lot. We were, um, we were actually excited that the police came because they there must have been like <laughs> complain about noise, but we were very disappointed that they didn't come to ask us what was wrong. So uh, next slide. I'm working on it. I, uh, my double screen seems so there we go. We're just going to go. go this way. There we go. We're expressed. <laughs> So yeah, what is the issue? Um, birthing people are not okay. They weren't okay before the pandemic, and um, you know, definitely through it, and and still, um, there's this disparity of domestic duties, right? The mental load, we also call it the second shift or the emotional labor, like all the things that we have in our head that we need to complete, all those tasks from thought to completion um, is really disproportionate. It tends to fall fall on mothers. Um, more so, and also, you know, can be unsatisfied in relationships. We know that having children is a risk factor for, for divorce. Um, as, as new mothers ourselves, we found ourselves really frustrated that, you know, people weren't talking about the emotional and psychological transition to motherhood. I, um, and, you know, Holly also, like we could barely even talk to our, our partners about it. I definitely didn't talk to my midwife. I was not honest. And it took a lot even to talk to a friend about it. And so um, we really feel like this needed to be normalized and talked about and um, so that others could feel comfortable um, in their in their transition, um, knowing that many of these thoughts and experiences are no normal and they're not, not alone um, because these thoughts can really make you feel isolated. They can make you feel like you're the only one, that you're crazy and all of that. We also felt really unsupported and really lacked the confidence, not only in the home to ask, ask for help. Um, you know, we, we often feel like asking for help is a weakness, um, really felt the inability to advocate for ourselves in, at home and at work, um, just feeling like weak or less than um, when you needed extra support as a mother. And we know that many um, PMADs are, are undiagnosed and, and untreated. Um, undiagnosed because also that we aren't honest. We're not, if we're not honest with ourselves or our partner, our friends, we're, you know, we're not honest with our provider either. Um, and so um, we know that when they're undiagnosed, that this can lead to poor attachment with the baby the, or the, ch the children. Um, and it can potentially lead to higher um, ACE scores. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So um, all of that leads us to kind of our solution and the creation of, of Moms Matter Now. So, you know, we were tired of hearing from friends like no one told me. And, you know, Kalisa and I always talk about how people go to um, birthing classes and breastfeeding classes and spend a lot of money decorating uh, nurseries and whatnot, but no one really talks about what it's going to do to your relationship or your sense of identity um, or uh, really anything, right? So Moms Matter Now, you know, we see it as this kind of proactive, preventative maternal mental health um, tool, essentially. And we didn't want people to say, hey, no one told me, right? We wanted to create a resource where people were prepared going into it, or, you know, if they use this resource later in life, um, it helped them make sense of their experience. And so, you know, also in the pandemic, we didn't want to just feel like victims. Um, we wanted to feel like people who were actually taking control and, and doing something and offering a solution. Um, so very, the pandemic very much felt like this catalyst for positive change. 
um, you know, like we've been talking about, you know, we want to inspire and empower women to be advocates, um, you know, for more equitable parenting practices, but also just normalizing taboo subjects and letting people know what to expect. Um, and then, you know, we, we do this um, by educating, empowering, and supporting expectant parents and new parents um, through a course that we created um, titled Expectant Moms, Empowered Moms. You know, again, the word mom used as, as an inclusive term. So next slide. So obviously this is a lot of text, but just wanted to give you an idea of the course. Um, it's nine modules. It's over 10 hours of content. We start off with introducing ourselves and our own um, transition to motherhood. We talk about uh, PMADS, um, it's more than postpartum depression, um, identity shift. We talk about uh, this term called matrescence, which is like adolescence, which we knew about when you're an adolescent, all the hormonal and changes. But for some reason, the the change to motherhood um, isn't talked about, and that's called about called matrescence, so identity and hormonal shift as well. Um, cognitive distortions, those are the brain, the lies that our brains tell us. Um, so it's really identifying and putting names to a lot of these experiences um, and thoughts that we have that that no one told us that we didn't have um, those names for um, previously. So the next slide just continues the course. Um, these are the first four modules. And then the next five, talk about the mental load and emotional labor, um, sex and intimacy after kids or the lack thereof, um, prioritizing your partner, um, body image. And the final one is be her, them now. So that empowerment of like going out, out into the world, feeling as empowered um, in your motherhood journey, wherever, wherever you are. Um, all the modules have tools for action and homework. They're not just lectures, but actually actual actionable um, tools to take take with you and learn from. And many, if you have a partner, many of these modules are also um, good to take together. So the only reason why we're showing, you know, those past two slides is uh, we've had this experience where people just feel like Moms Matter Now is kind of intangible, um, and it's been actually really helpful for us to show show the actual mod modules and the actual videos and be like, hey, we have a whole video about attunement and attachment. We have a whole video about partners and how they can experience perinatal mood and anxiety disorders too. We have a whole video on postpartum body image, right? Um, and so uh, that's why we kind of showed all of that. Um, this slide just shows a little bit about our um, <laughs> our thought process, but also, um, you know, the transformation that Moms Matter Now has gone through. At first, we uh, started off with this idea that we just wanted to create a course, um, and we decided to do a live beta course just to test it out. And so we actually offered a... Um, it was over Zoom, of course, but it was um, it was live. So we had participants come um, and meet. I think it was four Wednesdays in a in a row, um, and we had some presentation. We had some discussion. We had some homework. We had amazing, um, amazing kind of turnout, attendance, compliance, um, feedback. It was great. So Beta Course was like, yes, we have something here. Um, then we went into a membership model. Um, so this is like Amy Porterfield, Kajabi, <laughs> all of that. And our membership consisted, consisted of four things. We had uh, the course, we had uh, monthly live meetups that it, we called it coaching and connection. Then we had um, bonuses uh, with sex therapists and pelvic floor PTs and all kinds of things. Um, and then we also used a private app um, it's called circle, um, just for kind of, um, private correspondence. So that went on for a year that just ended. Um, it was really great. It was also a lot of work <laughs> and we also got a lot of feedback that it felt like too big of an offering. So we were not trying to create mom guilt, um, through moms matter now, but it was, it was a lot for people. And, um, we kind of felt like it was, um, more than most people were able to participate in. Um, so that leads us to where we are now, these three bottom arrows, um, right now we're offering the individual course, 
um, for sale. And we always like to say, hey, this is the best thing you can give to someone for like a baby shower gift, right? They have this, they can get swaddles, right? They can get blankies, cute outfits. That's nice. What about this information about your emotional and psychological, you know, mental health? Um, and so the individual course is for sale on our website. We have this thought or this idea that this would be a great addition um, to a corporate benefits package. Um, it seems like, especially post pandemic, a lot of employers are having a hard time attracting talent, retaining talent. Um, you know, we offer all kinds of, you know, other perks in jobs. What if um, this Moms Matter Now course uh, was offered to any employee um, that would, you know, whether it's the birthing person or the partner um, to give this course to say, hey, we really care about you as a person, as a partner, um, you know, as part of this team. So there's that. And then the third kind of leg of the stool is we actually received a partnership grant from the Alaska Mental Health Trust Authority, and we are very excited um, to have an equitable distribution of our course. And so this is pretty new. Um, we're just starting off on kind of our year of engagement, but we have funding to give away this course for 200 or to 250 um, people who meet uh, criteria that we're actually working on right now. Um, and, you know, we're going to partner with other providers and entities and nonprofits to help identify candidates um, for this course. And we have also, uh, we also know that not everyone has necessarily the time to just, you know, engage in something like this. And so we're actually, uh, we have funding to pay people in gift cards to take this course. So we see it as preventative mental health and, you know, a way for moms and birthing people to, um, you know, stay intact for, for, you know, and, and to, to feel empowered in, in their motherhood, um, or parenting experience. So next slide. Just wanted to share a couple of testimonials. The first one, I'll just read them. This course provided an important space to help me realize I'm not the only one who is experiencing the joys, challenges, ups and downs of motherhood. The coursework provided actionable steps to help you recognize patterns you might experience, work your way through them, and make changes to build your future empowered self. Listening to the others' experiences and the group discussions, this is from our beta, um, has helped me feel validated as a person and a mom. And this one is more recent. The Moms Matter Now Expectant Moms Empowered Moms course is everything I wish I knew before I began my motherhood journey. Like a reassuring visit with a close friend, these resources can lift up, support, and guide any new mom so she, they can step forward into unfamiliar territory, feeling like they at least have a good map and compass. <laughs> So just a couple things, um, how you can help. And I know that we're running out of time to jump into the discussion, but um, you know, we would love and welcome help with any of those three legs of the stool. So entities that can help identify and distribute um, for the grant, um, corporations that might like to partner with MMN, um, and then individuals who might like to purchase, you know, we would love to receive referrals. Um, so, you know, those are our three ways. And the next slide is just our contact information. Um, you know, please go check out our website if you're interested. Um, but I think we've done enough talking and would love to turn it back to Jacqueline and or open it up for discussion. So I thank you so much, Calissa and Holly. That was wonderful. If everybody could please give either a virtual or a real, I am leaving the last slide up for just a minute in case anybody's taking notes. Then I'm going to stop our share. All right, you ready? One, two, three, stop. <laughs> and um, you can always reach out to me if you need that contact information again. Um, thank you so much. I We have enough time. We, we can even uh, extend our time a little bit. I'm sure there's questions in the audience. Does anybody have a question they'd like to ask? I have a question if it's okay. Please, so, of so some of my overwhelming fear and terror with my first child um, was kind of pushed along by some kind of surprising medical things that occurred to me. Um, and I absolutely adore the 
curriculum you guys have um, developed. And um, I wanted to say, um, for some people that are that are prone to anxiety, um, I heard that you have some um, specialists that can also help help your clients. Just things like, yes, you have to give birth to your afterbirth after you have the baby. You know, experienced, I had midwives, right? I had a midwife. They're so used to it. They don't know how to explain that first. And then also another thing is for a lot of women, it's very hard to breastfeed and it caused me to feel insufficient and somehow, anyway, just a few things. Everyone's um, experience will be unique, but just wondering because it's a fantastic um fantastic uh, I don't want to over talk guys I apologize um, and just was wondering about the the things that kind of push the anxiety that have to do with the physical experience absolutely I mean you know we have that whole module kind of about cognitive distortions and you know kind of catastrophizing and personalizing and you know all of that and we use examples um you know real life examples de-identified from you know my clients or whatnot, you know, that talk about um, all of those hard things, you know, and I think a lot of the premise of Moms Matter Now is to, again, talk about those hard things, right? And it's really hard to um, anticipate anything and everything that will come up, um, but at least the conversation is is starting, right? And, you know, we we kind of think of this as kind of a way to break the silence and, you know, um, I love the idea of maybe a couple people taking this together, right? So that then they have more language to talk about their, their hardship breastfeeding or, you know, how that leads to these disordered thoughts, right? And so really the, you know, while the course can't answer or, um, you know, uh, Kind of go over like every single thing that can happen. You know, our basic idea is to give people the skills to be able to to do so, and the empowerment and the confidence to do that. I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're all about talking about the taboo stuff. <laughs> awesome. So Alyssa has a question, please. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I'm a pediatrician in Whale Pass, Alaska, which is on Prince of Wales. Island. I'm also a peer support specialist. Um, I have kind of a humorous story about my postpartum um, journey as a pediatrician. Um, it's humorous, but it's also telling of the toxic situation I was in uh, with my work. Um, I, I I'm a pediatrician and I came back from maternity leave with a halftime contract. For the next five and a half years, my hospital forced me um, to work closer to full time without compensation and in Ketchikan. Mm -hmm. um, it was horrible, but six, about six months um, after giving birth, I was called in to attend a delivery. Um, it was icy out. I had to pump. So I attached myself to my, my breast pump and I'm going around a curve in Ketchikan and started to swerve. And all I could think of in my head was like the front cover of the newspaper, pediatrician impaled by breast pump. <laughs> oh, I don't really have a question, but I thought I, I always think back on that funny. Yeah. Well, thank well, you for, for joining uh, that. And I, what I would say is I loved the information that you put in the chat. Is there, Calissa, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. Any other questions in our audience? I have one. This is um, Marcy Ash. Um, I'm in Anchorage with All Alaska Pediatric Partnership. Um, I I know there's a very wide range of um, you know when individuals become moms. Is there um, like a beginning age cutoff? Like, can teen parents participate? Can um, you know, I don't know, maybe grandparents are taking care of newborns or is mm -hmm. there like a eligibility, I guess, is my question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, I mean, you know, we have a draft of the, at least the qualifying criteria for the grant right now. And, you know, one of the things that I preliminarily wrote in there, and we're actually trying to get a reproductive psychiatrist to kind of like look over that the criteria for the grant, but to answer your question, we have tested it most with, I would say, 
um, you know, mothers between the age of like probably 26 and 45, um, you know, do I think it would be helpful for a teen mom to take it? Absolutely. I think, I think it would. Um, I definitely like wrote that into the qualifying criteria, um, for the grant, um, you know, and just as examples, you know, people who score, um, with a certain threshold on the EPDS or, you know, PHQ-9, these are like depression and anxiety and postnatal mm -hmm. screenings, but then other um, risk factors, again, this is for the grant, um, people who have experienced infertility, people who have multiple pregnancies, people who are teen moms, adoptive parents, like all of this, right? Like people need this, this resource. And so I don't know if that answers your question. Um, oh, it does. It does. Okay. And I think okay. too, definitely it's not just for first time mothers. Um, yes. you know, your experiences can be so different between, and you can always, um, have actionable tools for, you know, improving your journey. Um, later on, we have had, um, individuals take it with kids up to age 10, um, is kind of the, kind of the range expectant to age 10. Okay. And, you know, we, we've also had parents take it, maybe they had a really trying, um, uh, just a really difficult experience with their first child. And then they took our, our course and then had a subsequent child. And they're like, wow, like this is a totally different experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, a yeah, sure they've gone through it. Um, uh, but then just having the language and the knowledge and the tools that we present in the course, um, you know, they talk about how it is a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we also acknowledge, um, you know, the U S like, you know, I'm so, I'm so, you know, we, we don't have that systemic support. We don't have the paid maternity leave. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry that, you know, you had to work like half, you know, full-time and got paid for half. Like, you know, I actually just came back from uh, a couple weeks in Norway and, you know, they have paid paternity, you know, uh, paternity leave. And, um, you know, there are so many studies showing about how that benefits the entire family system. Um, and, you know, so again, we can only control what we can control. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we're trying to give people the knowledge, the tools, the skills, um, we would, you know, while advocating for deeper systemic change simultaneously. Wonderful. So, so um, I want to acknowledge two things. One is that it's 1.30. We're, we're a fast and furious group. So I know that a lot of times people need to move on to other things. However, I'm willing to stay a little bit. I, I wonder if Calissa and Holly might be willing to stay. Um, Alyssa in the chat has asked if you would be willing to provide a presentation to a pediatrician's group. Uh, that She asked, she said, I schedule grand rounds for the Alaska AAP chapter. Would you be able to do a presentation for Alaskan pediatricians? And um, I, I answered on your behalf, Holly and Calissa. I said, <laughs> yeah, you bet. <laughs> so yeah. um, let me know. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would love to. And um, we would love to. And, you know, I think part of this, um, you know, especially with, with the grant, you know, we're looking to OBGYNs, but who do new parents see? They see the pediatricians. Um, okay. <laughs> the, the moms and birthing people, they don't really have a lot of support once they've actually birthed the child. Um, but there's a lot of check-in for the baby, at least at the beginning. And so, you know, those pediatricians by default, you know, almost become the people who are witnessing, um, you know, the uh, mother or birthing person's um, mental health and capacity. And, you know, I was talking with a pediatrician friend, you know, just about how often, um, and Kalisa alluded to this, you know, how often uh, mothers are not truthful on the screenings um, that, that they get because there's so much shame and stigma around not being a good mom, right? Um, and so it's very common for people to not be forthright and, and honest um, on, on those screenings. And so would love, you know, to talk about PMADS, you know, talk about kind of the shame and the stigma. And, um, you know, if you go back to the videos, we have entire videos about ambivalence and motherhood, about being, you know, a good enough mom, um, you know, all, all of these different concepts. And so, you know, would love to, um, work with any, any providers to just help move this conversation forward. Wonderful. I just want to say, um, we'll, 
we'll have Gretchen answer the, or ask the next question. I just wanna say, this is the entire purpose behind Health Tie. So these connections that we're making, so exciting for me personally. Gretchen, please. Um, hi, Holly, hi, Calissa. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say how impressed I am at how much you're iterating the way you're reaching your customers. It's just been wonderful to watch you trying new things to kind of. Awesome. Gretchen, you muted yourself. I don't know how that happened. Um, I was just complimenting your entrepreneurial journey and your iterations and saying that I love that you're finding new ways to reach the people that need this info. Good Thank job. Thank you for all your support, well, Gretchen. You've been a huge part of it as well. Yeah, yeah. Gretchen's been a, a huge cheerleader um, of ours and just really, really appreciate that. So good to see you. Yeah. yeah. It, and what I love about what Gretchen's brought up is this is um, not only a resource, it's a business. And so, you know, that's a part of our journey here as well as trying to support you. I always say, if we can't get this business up and running, we can't have new moms use it. So our job is to make sure that you're successful. So if anybody here has ideas for how they could further um, build their business, please reach out and share that as well. Um, I have a question. I'm Trisha. Um, I am um, the EFMP system navigator here at J Bear, um, but I was wondering if you guys work with military families because there's um, active duty as well and not just spouses. Mm -hmm. Yep, ab absolutely. Um, you know, we, I definitely have worked with some like in my practice. Um, I'm trying to think if we had any in our membership, um, but definitely, absolutely. I would say, you know, maybe, active active duty um family should be written in to um you know the amt a the, well, uh, the mental yeah. health trust authority um what, one of right. the things that came into mind when you when i'm hearing this is that my um my husband works more on the innovation side of the air force and um he was talking about how travis air force base in california they now have an app and they wear um it's like hooked up to like a like a garmin watch right and if it shows their um, their levels are kind of off after giving birth, then they're they're trying to monitor postpartum depression and have an app for that for them. So um, if you're okay, I could send this information to them because I just think that there could be a good partnership there with the military because they're really trying to because um, it's a, a lot of the times it's not just the spouses because of you know they're they're employed, but it's active duty members they have to come back to work. Um, sooner than they're ready. So um, I don't know if that's something you might be interested in. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be great. And it seems like that could be, you know, a natural partnership if they have an app and, you know, we have a course or something mm -hmm. like that, that could, that could be great. Thank you. Awesome. So I've, I've made some notes. I can connect uh, both Alyssa and, and Trisha to you. So I'll send a, a, a introductory email afterwards. And of course we have some contact information in the chat. Is there anybody else who has a yes, please Marco. Um, so uh, this is so fantastic. I am a uh, colleague with Gretchen at the Center for Economic Development and a new parent myself. And so a, I totally can resonate with the fact of I have like 10 books that I purchased have not read. And um, I, I just, I got to be honest, I don't know if they're going yeah. to get to no time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to do that. But A, I, I think this is so fantastic. And I uh, worked with uh, the midwives over at Geneva Woods and your card has been there for months. And I'm so excited to see as you continue to progress and just wanted to say, um, I work with Gretchen uh, and, and Jacqueline also, also a colleague. Um, if you need assistance as you continue to develop like the business aspects of, you know, would love to, to help and, and um, be a resource and a connection. Um, but thank you so much. This is super important work and really speaks to me as a new parent myself. Thanks. Oh, thanks for sharing that. And I was just laughing because on our website, we actually have this stack of books and it says we've uh, we've read all the books so you don't have to <laughs> and <laughs> um totally get that and i will just share you know the fact that it's 35 videos people can kind of pick and choose and be like okay i want to watch the video about mom guilt watch mm -hmm. that right because i'm experiencing it right now um and there's also an audio only component to it i mean obviously like each course has slides and 
um, you know, pre presentation and then usually some handouts or a worksheet. Um, but also if you just want to like listen to the um, videos or modules, like in the car or, you know, while you're doing dishes at night or whatever, like that's an option too. We're, we try to make it like as accessible as possible because we know that people are so incredibly busy and um, welcome to parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a wild ride, right? 